I know some people who wonder why the Noble Truths are called noble, especially with regard to the first two. The first one teaches that suffering is clinging. What's noble about clinging? Its cause is craving. What's noble about craving? What's noble in that not so much the suffering itself or the clinging or the craving. It's in your willingness to see that that's what the truth is. In other words, you take responsibility for your suffering, and you're willing to admit that some things that you're very attached to, literally in the case of the First Noble Truth, are the suffering. You're not going to blame other people. You're not going to blame society at large. You realize that it's things you've been doing, things that you've chosen to do, that's taking a noble attitude towards suffering and to its cause. And this is what makes those truths noble. Remember when the Buddha was teaching Rahula at the very beginning of his teachings, the young boy, he said, Look at your actions as you would look into a mirror. You're going to see your mind. It's through purifying your actions that you purify the mind. So your gaze is always reflected back inward. The Buddha himself, when he was searching for awakening, took that attitude. Whenever he found himself in a blind alley, the first question was, okay, what am I doing wrong? Why am I doing X? It's not getting good results. Why don't I try something else? It was that noble approach to the problem of suffering that enabled him to find noble truths. And as we practice, we're becoming more noble to the extent to which we are following in line with the Noble Truths. If we keep slipping back to our old ways, blaming this person, that person, that person is misbehaving, this person is not quite right, we fall below the Noble level. We're back to where everybody else is in the world, not taking responsibility for their own suffering. So these truths are noble because they are responsible. They accept responsibility, and they also show the way out. You're not just stuck there. There are choices you can make. That's the third and the fourth noble truth. Things you're going to have to give up, qualities you're going to have to work on developing. Those are the qualities of the path. And there's a nobility in taking on this task. It shows that you really are accepting responsibility. And you aim your efforts at gaining some dispassion for your cravings, for the things you really like, as John Sowell used to say. The reason we suffer is because of the things we like. We like the things we crave. We like our cravings. As the Buddha said, we go through life with craving as our companion. We seem to trust it implicitly. Now we have to realize that we've chosen a false friend. We're going to have to dissolve the friendship, because it wasn't really a friendship. Craving is the sort of thing that is like a friend who gets us to do something wrong. And then when the police come to catch us, the friend goes running off, and we're the ones left, having to face the punishment. How much has your craving actually suffered? None at all. You're the one who's suffering. Do you want to see that you don't want to hang around craving anymore? 
as for your clingings. You have to learn how to step back from them. This too is a noble act. Step back from sensuality, your fascination with thinking about and planning sensual pleasures. There's a lot of gratification there, and you have to say no. You have to find something higher. You have to find a substitute. That's one of the reasons why we're practicing concentration, is to give ourselves a pleasure that's not as blind and intoxicated as sensuality. Clinging to our ideas of how things should be done, that's a huge suffering right there. I have to learn how to give that up, too. For a lot of people, that's one of the hardest, our clinging to our views about the world and our clinging to our ideas about who we are. These are all very intimate things, and so you learn how to reflect on them, see them as actions, see them as choices that you're making, and be mature enough to admit that, yes, they are causing suffering. So you work on the path. Whatever the factors of virtue, right speech, right action, right livelihood, say that you've got to give up, you're willing to give up. Whatever right resolve says to give up, you give up. Right mindfulness tells you to give up greed and distress with reference to the world. For a lot of us, that's a huge part of our lives, especially now that news is available all the time. We have to overcome our fear of missing out and realize that what the news is telling us is that the big issues in the world are things that somebody else is doing someplace else, over which you have minimal control. It's distracting you from what the Buddha said, which is that the most important things for you in the world right now are what you're doing right here, right now. So you want to be alert to what you're doing right now. So there's a lot of giving up in the course of the path. And eventually, of course, it's aimed at getting you to give up your passion for your cravings. Give up your passion, aversion, and delusion around your clinging. It's a tall order. And the people who take it on are the ones who are being responsible. This is one of the reasons why we don't have Buddhists out on the street corners preaching to people. That's what the Buddha is asking is that you take responsibility. As he says, all he does is point out the way. He's not going to do the work for us. We have to do the work for ourselves. And that's taking a noble stance toward our suffering. So when you look at the noble truths, realize why they're noble. They're asking you to take a noble stance toward the problem of your suffering and to take on noble duties. As the Buddha said, what we do with suffering is to comprehend it. And for a lot of people, that's the last thing that would occur to them. They either want to run away from it or push it away, or wipe it out. But when you admit that you have some passion for it, and you have some delusion around it, then too you're going to do something about it. Try to ferret out exactly what the cravings are that make you cling. And even though they've been trusted companions for a long time, you have to realize okay, you've been foolish in hanging around with them, and you have to let them go. You do this by developing the path, which, as I said, involves a lot of letting go.
you get to the noblest of the noble truths, which is actually developing dispassion and being aware of what you're doing at the same time. Dispassion for the cause of suffering, dispassion for the suffering, ultimately even dispassion for the path. And it's in following these noble truths that you become noble. Your willingness to take them on is the beginning of, of this noble path. As you follow it through, you find the nobility of, that human beings are capable of. That's why the Buddha said his path is admirable in the beginning, admirable in the middle, admirable in the end. because it requires us to be responsible all the way through. 